getting consistent port names is commonly a pain for beginners when you're just starting to use Linux and all these devices. You know how it goes. You follow a tutorial, you plug in a device to a USB port, it shows up as dev TTY USB 0, and everything works fine. Then you plug in your next device. That one shows up as dev TTY USB 1. You change your programs and port files and parameter files so everything matches and everything is working great. And then you reboot. Now maybe your motor driver that was at port USB 0 was at USB 1 and your LiDAR is now at USB 0. And that's just with two devices. Our robots can end up with a lot of devices. So it's important that every time we reboot the robot or plug in new devices that we don't have to change our software and our parameter files uh, and manually go and look for which port number is which device every time we want to start up and do uh, some operations. So this quick tutorial is really a general Linux tutorial, but of course I'm going to talk to you in uh, devices that we'll be using for robotics, but it really works with um, any devices that you plug in and, and populates as a dev port of some sort. This is a problem that comes up a lot, and very recently it came up with my friends at the Wayne State University Robotics Club. So uh, I was helping them out and thought I would do a tutorial for everyone else as well. And um, this should be pretty quick. So the first thing I want to talk about is that what we're not doing is making it so every time we plug in a LiDAR, that LiDAR is TTY USB 0, for instance. Um, we can't really do that. We don't need to do that. But what we can do is give that LiDAR a custom named sim link. So we could call the LiDAR LiDAR 1, or we could call it Bob. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that every time we plug in that LiDAR, whether the computer sees it as TTY USB 0 or TTY USB 1 or TTY USB 20, it doesn't really matter because you can just simply tell your programs to look for dev slash Bob or whatever you name that device. And that's going to create a device named dev slash Bob. And all that's going to do is actually point to the correct location. It's going to do this automatically every time you plug in. And it's going to save you a lot of headaches. Once you do the first device, you can simply do another and another and another and I'm going to show you how. So if you've used these devices before, you probably know how to find their port, or maybe you don't, we'll go through it. Um, all these devices show up in, um, in a folder from root dev. Um, so we can do a list, and it looks like you're listing file names, right? List dev. Uh, and this is all the devices in dev. Now, you can make it a little easier to read, uh, because a lot of these we don't do a lot with directly. And we can say dev tty star. And this shows you um, that we don't have any tty USB devices or AMA devices uh, present at all. What I'm going to do is plug in this RP LiDAR, run dev tty star again. And you can see that it showed up as dev TTY USB 0. So that's all well and good, but you know as well as I do that if we had a couple of these devices um, that took up this spot in TTY USB, uh, there's no guarantee this RP LiDAR might show up as USB 1 or 2, and all of your programs that look for the LiDAR at USB 0 would be broken. What we can do is use something called UDEV. And UDEV allows us to set a rule that, um, well, so if you cd backslash, I'm going to go to etc, UDEV, and then rules is the folder where all of these rules are stored. So here we can list all the rules that uh, my robot has, and these are my rules. Gee, okay. If we look at this rules file, it's just a text file that has a number of entries for my different devices. So first, each of these lines is a rule, and rules have to be on one line. You can't, for instance, uh, hit an enter and, and expect that to be one rule. Uh, they have to be all on one line, uh, because that's how the system delineates between rules. If, if it were on two lines, it's going to do something we don't expect, like, um, yeah, it might 
run this part, but this part doesn't have an action to create the sim link. So let's keep rules on one line. Uh, I like to separate them by yet another space. Rules have matches and actions. And here, all of these uh, sections that are separated by a comma, these are a separate match. I know it's a match, not an action, because it has an equality operator. And actions have uh, an assignment operator, like plus equals. And I'll explain that more in a minute. So what UDEV is going to do, every time there's an event where a device is plugged in, UDEV is going to scan all the rules, not just in this file, by the way, uh, but in others. And it's going to go through all the matches, looking to see if the device matches. Now, let me show you where these come from before we move on. I go back to my other computer. Type LSUSB. This is the first easiest place to get this information. Every USB device has a vendor ID and a product ID. And this is amongst the easiest things to match. We are looking for this device here. So if you're not sure when you're looking at this what your device is, kind of like the way we found the port, we can just unplug it, run LSUSB, plug it back in, run LSUSB again, and, and the new entry uh, is going to be the device that we want to work with. So let me clear this up. Okay, so we know that this is the RP LiDAR, or more specifically, there's a little board that comes with the LiDAR uh, to interface between the serial port on the LiDAR and the USB port on the computer. This part is the vendor ID. Uh, and then after the colon is the product ID. So what you see here in the rules, um, let's just focus on this top line for a moment and then we'll get to the others. Um, what the UDEV system is going to do is check that the kernel matches TTY USB star, um, so TTY USB whatever, 0, 1, 2, uh, it doesn't matter if that much matches, it's going to see if the ID, uh, the vendor ID matches 0403, and, um, and then if the product ID also matches 6001. So if all of these matches uh, are true, um, then we have a couple of actions. Uh, this one sets a mode zero six six six. I believe that's a, I believe that's a permissions thing. Um, so the sim link works for um, all users. It's sort of like when you um, ch mod uh, for port permissions, and you can do six 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 for all users, or uh, I forget all the other ones. Uh, and so the next thing we do is. Um, add a sim link and plus equals um, whatever we want it to be called. Uh, I just have it called FTDI, so I know that that's always it. You can actually add uh, by separating with the space more if you want. So if I actually want to set the port for FTDI, uh, or for some reason if I wanted to do uh, motor controller, which I don't know why we would do that, but uh, but yeah, you can add you can add more than one name. Uh, if you wanted to, more than one sim link. So with this entry done, what we can do, save and exit that. We can reboot, or we can just uh, type this command here, which should reboot and, and trigger an event so it searches uh, through the rules and all the devices and sets the links. Um, some people have said this trigger doesn't work for them. I'm not sure if that's um, a Linux version thing where it's, um, yeah, I'm not sure. So if this doesn't work, um, you should be able to just unplug and plug your devices back in manually. And worst case, just reboot to test that it worked. Now if we uh, check the TTY star, what you're going to see, oh, I didn't want to TTY that, check for LS dev. So, and what you see here is a port called FTDI, which as we discussed, is just a sim link pointing to whichever USB port, uh, TTY USB 0 or 1 or 2, um, that 
that the FTDI happens to be. And now that we know that my motor control board via the FTDI will always be uh, on port dev FTDI, we can go to our, our launch files or our programs, wherever you have, wherever you have these ports set, and we can change the port from dev slash TTY USB whatever. And that's all we have to do, and we never have to change the port in our launch and config files again. So the other thing you're going to notice, with the FTDI, that was enough because we only have one FTDI. So vendor and product ID were adequate. So this vendor ID and product ID happen to be used by both Slamtech for the RP LiDAR and uh, whichever company it was, Innomaker, I think, um, that makes the LD LiDAR. I tentatively want to say this LD LiDAR is a favorite small, uh, relatively inexpensive LiDAR. Uh, I'll be doing a video comparison. but. The LD LiDAR and the RP LiDAR use the same interface board. So if you have two LiDARs of those brands, then you're gonna to have to get more specific and use serial numbers too. Uh, you actually have to reprogram the serial number, which is not a big deal. If enough of you ask me, um, perhaps we'll do a quick video on that. But the way you find this info, so if you use this UDIVADIUM info command, it's gonna spit out a whole lot of extra information about actually a lot of devices that kind of goes through the device tree. So you do have to scroll a little bit, find the device that matches the product ID, the vendor ID. And here, for instance, this is our FTDI. Here's the vendor ID and the product ID. Um, so if I did have two FTDIs, uh, I don't think I have to reprogram those because those do come with unique serial numbers. And what I could do is add a match condition Not mean to capitalize that. This equals. And that's all there is to it. Now, if I add another FTDI, uh, I can do a similar thing and make sure that the other FTDI is called FTDI2 or something. And you can add any of these properties that you want. If you're doing multiple of the same device, you just want to make sure you only have one plugged in at a time when you run the UDEV ADM info command. So that's overall how the UDEV system works. And let's just walk through how to actually create your own. You'll find yourself on the command line, CD ETC, UDEV, and then rules.d. This is the folder you want to be in. Do an LS to make sure you don't make a duplicate name. Now look at the names of these rules. All right, you're going to make a text file with a name similar to this. And, and the naming for these has to start with a number. The numbers are important because from what I understand, the lower the number, the higher priority. A new rule right now, and I want it to be super important, I could use 50 or even 10. I'm gonna use gedit, you could use nano, whatever you like. And then we'll just make a new file called 50-test.rules. And you know, you probably know that's going to just create a blank text file. So let's see, we're going to make a rule for that FTDI. And the first entry is going to be kernel equals, going to equal equal TTY USB star, put a comma, and set our next rule. So you can try to remember, or you can actually just copy and paste. Right click copy. We're going to add that we want to match this vendor ID. Comma to separate. And we want to match the product ID. Okay. wanted to get really specific, you could add the serial number. I'm not going to right now. We want to add mode home equals 0666, comma separate, and symlink plus equals, and whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it FT test FTEI. We'll save that, we'll exit, we'll run sudo udevadium control reload rules and sudo udevadium trigger. Now if we ls dev, oh 
on the table. Again. Here we have our new port test FTDI. Well, I think that about wraps it up. That really wasn't bad, was it? I know it's often tempting to put these things off and say I'll do it later, I've just got one or two devices. But really, it's better to get this done early rather than wait till you have a lot of packages um, that will need to be modified later on. I'm Lloyd Brumbach, author of Practical Robotics in C++. Thanks a lot for watching, and thank you so much for your support, and I will see you next time.